All right, it is uh, Wednesday, April 21 for us again. Uh, we're not gonna hide it from you because I actually messed up and that is why you see JR in a- uh, You guys are wondering, it's not the office? Yes, it's not the office because I messed up and the previous recording was actually streaming it directly at Twitch TV. So where were you guys? We were live. We, yeah, we were live. <laughs> And uh, the people who came into our stream were wondering why um, they clicked the button that says <laughs> retro gaming and uh, these people are talking about observances. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we have to be quick with this one because, uh, well, at least we know what we were talking about for the most part. Like our oh, first by one. Way, I can finally see the title. So yeah, it's good for me. I'm not using my phone. There you go. Uh, it's World Creativity and Innovation Day. Maybe if it's maybe if this is better this way, then you should just like do what you need to do and go home, and then just we'll just record at home. Oh, we, we are you can, allowed? Yeah. Are you allowed to leave early if you're still gonna work at home? Like this? oh no, well no, unfortunately no, because I'm the one closing. So ah, oh. <laughs> well, well this is gonna be rare for you guys then, where Jr. could see the title, but that's very little difference for you guys. It's more difference for him. So uh, yeah, uh, earlier we were talking about how you could observe. Uh, this day uh, and we said you could do something innovative by taking something you like for JR's music uh, as an example of course he likes many other things mm -hmm. uh, my example was video games and uh, it's just a thought experiment I think that's the better word to say is a thought experiment thinking about how you could improve that thing that you like so for JR how he could improve the music that he likes how, he, uh, how I could improve the design of the game that I like. Or, or for you, uh, I mean, would you say it also applies for food? Yeah. yeah. Because uh, you can be, well, I mean, a lot of people are being creative with their food already, but innovative part, how do you, how do you innovate uh, a type of dish? I mean, like the one experiment I did where I put uh, chilies on every single Filipino food and see which ones um, would taste better with it. That that's a that's a innov innovation. I would say. Nah, okay, there you go. Um, uh, for you guys, uh, let's say you don't cook. Um, something that you enjoy, let's say TV shows and movies. Uh, mm -hmm. The way they told the story. What do you think would be a better way to tell that story? Um, so it doesn't need to be something something tangible, right? It yeah. Like well, you said like a movie. There. Yeah, the way they told the story, like, uh, oh, maybe, um, maybe they shouldn't have shown MacGyver creating this bomb out of a paperclip, because they, I think that's a, a bit too far fetched, you know, <laughs> something like that. Um, up to you, how you would do it. It was actually good that you brought that up because uh, adapt movie adaptations or movies uh, adapting uh, like books is a oh, good form of. I did that almost all the time back then at high school where I would read a book. For example, the time that I was reading the book, uh, Iliad, that movie with, uh, is it Leonardo DiCaprio? Oh, I haven't seen the movie, but uh, are you talking about the Iliad and Odyssey? It was long ago. I don't know if that's the okay. title. I think it's just called Troy or something. Oh, well, I know Troy. I mean, at least I... I but they had the movie it. come out during that time that I was reading that book, so... Uh, I was able to compare the two and yeah I mean they omitted a lot of the stories that happen in the book uh, I understand because a movie has to fit in one hour and 30 minutes well unless you can make different sequels right yes uh, however the whole story was on the book was in there except they omitted some parts so because of that limitation now I was able to think, I think they shouldn't have eliminated this story, but I think they shouldn't have told this one. Like, I think this story is more important than the other one, so maybe that scene should have been in the movie, but this one isn't. So there are things that you could totally modify or change in things, uh, even the best ones. I think that's why, uh, that's the reason why one of the, my most favorite movie would be The Lord of the Rings. It's just because, I mean, they did omit, omit I haven't read the book myself, but I've heard, at least from my research, is they did omit 
uh, things in the book also, just like any other movies, right? But uh, I guess they're one of the, uh, the the movies that committed the least amount of... Well, uh, I mean, it's a very I mean, long movie. <laughs> yeah, three movies. Each, each movie is like three hours long. I mean, yeah, come yeah. on. So I mean that's that's just it, they, we I, that's why I understand that you had to admit some stuff. There's some sacrifices that had to be made if your movie is just supposed to be this long or something like that. Oh, I forgot again. <laughs> oh, okay. oh yeah, I forgot again. Well, that's a little bit of an inside joke, but now Ian's gonna tell us that. Oh man, why did I forget again? <laughs> Let's let's hope that you didn't see what just happened there. <laughs> and 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 if you didn't see, please don't rewind it, okay? Instead, answer me this question. What is Beethoven's favorite fruit? And then good Jerry, you have to pretend that you didn't know. Yes, well, I'm, I'm going to act like I don't know. Okay. Huh. What? Banana. -na. <laughs> it's funny to us because we already told this joke, and I, I, I remember because and remember we we messed up, so that's why we had to redo the thing. And I can't believe I forgot <laughs> to say it again. But I anyways, was waiting for you to to say that because I'm, I'm like at this point I'm, I'm not ready to uh, kind of pretend that I don't know. But you you skipped this slide. <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, Let's just give examples of what we eat bananas with. I eat it with oatmeal and also crepe. I forgot to mention it on the previous oh. earlier, but I, crepe is also... There's a nice crepe place down at Ball Road and Valley View. Oh yeah, it's... Uh, I forget the name, but it crepe? has crepe in the name. Yeah, crepe maison. It's uh, oh, there we go. basically <laughs> in English, the mansion crepe. <laughs> <laughs> it's the... It's well, the of course, it's not a mansion, but yeah, they do so. Yeah, it's not a mansion, but... It, it's a grand house about crepes, is basically what he's trying to convey. And the owner is pretty nice. The old man that he's the only one working there, especially since of our situation, he can't afford to hire people. But he seems to be well supported by the community. I see a lot of people drop by there and buy some crepes. I want to support him more because I think his crepes are delicious. But again, it's sweet, so unfortunately yeah. my body's not and gonna arms. agree with that. Yeah. Every once in a while, I would drop by and buy uh, a crepe from him because I support him. I really like his stuff. But anyways, I um, the best part is you could have crepes with uh, cognac. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. The not as in not oh yeah that as in they have it at crepes maison. You could order. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I just realized. That yeah, they have a Grand Mignon, uh, Grand, uh, what was it again? Grand Monnier, Grand Monnier crepe, and there's another one. It's a different French cognac that they have in there. Wait, I don't think it's in, uh, it's in Ball Road because it's a gas station over there. There, there is, but Valley, next right? to the gas station is the Crepe Maison. Yeah, it is a gas station at the corner, but next to the gas station is Crepes Maison. Oh, okay. Yeah. You you guys should try it. You guys could eat sweets. <laughs> Support the old men. <laughs> well, I mean, if they're not too big of a fan for sweet, then uh, if you guys are like me, when I hear the word banana, uh, first thing that comes to mind, banana bread. Banana bread. And we oh, did mention God. that uh, our favorite, um, it's a favorite by one of our friends, Matt, if you guys oh, yeah. remember him. And if that is a huge, huge fan of yeah, he, he doesn't watch our show, <laughs> but the next time you ever see him, then you could uh, ask him about banana bread. Uh, this, this he'll, you, he'll get it. Don't worry. Yeah, he'll, he'll get, get it. it. Or, or, or this is what you need to ask him. Hey, Matt, I heard the story about banana bread. What happened? There you go. <laughs> the, the <laughs> I heard the story about you saying banana bread. What happened? There you go. And and. We're not gonna tell and you what happened. Like, it's all, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he'll he'll handle the rest. He'll tell you the story. Oh. <laughs> Moving on to something that goes with banana bread, uh, tea. Does it? Oh yeah, it does. It yes. Does, yeah. As long as don't put sugar in it. Just just the cream, I think. Actually, not even the cream. If you just drink it with tea, because banana itself is creamy already, mm, and it gives the true. banana yeah. bread. I mean, you put it on oatmeal. Yeah. So the typical way is shown here uh, from England where they put milk to make it creamy. 
Um, and just, just like coffee, you put cream in it to make it creamy. And it behaves just like coffee because both of them are bitter. Um, and, and you eat sweet with it. Uh, coffee, donuts, tea, they eat crumpets. Same thing. Uh, but I prefer my tea drinking cold. So... Iced tea, man. I like iced tea, usually oolong tea. Uh, I usually get that when I eat ramen. It just... It's, for me, it's just perfect because like the ramen is salty. And then if, 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 if the saltiness is starting to get to me, then I sip the tea and then it mellows mm. out again. Um, and anyways, uh, it's not that I don't like hot tea. The hot tea that I like is from Chinese restaurants. If you ever, not Chinese takeout, which is different. Uh, Chinese restaurants where you sit down at a table and then you open a menu and then you order. Uh, they serve you these, this tea that just goes perfect with Chinese food. Uh, because Chinese Just food has a... Just like that, that greasiness. Yeah, to combat the greasiness. It, that's what they say too. It, it, it's, it's not that they're trying to hide that their food is greasy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and, and we all know that fat is not 100% bad for you. There are some good fats. But they admit that the greasiness, uh, the way you cut that uh, is to, to drink tea. Uh, kind of like if something is to greasy you uh, you squeeze lemon into it like fish is like naturally oily because of like omega uh, omega-3 fats and stuff like you usually see fish with a squeeze of lemon or lime yeah. because that's what that's what they mean by cutting you don't actually cut it physically but it's supposed to stop the the overwhelmingness of the oiliness so yeah moving on to today in history we got 1918, the Red Baron is killed. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the first time me hearing it's from a pizza. It's a pizza brand, Red Baron. Uh, his full name is Manfred, Manfred Albrecht Freier von Richthofen. I have to slow down. Sounds German. German. Yeah, German is not my um, native language, so I have to slow down to read it. Uh, he's a pi fighter pilot of the German Air Force in World War One, so that means his plane is pretty ancient World looking. World War One, yeah, right here, and that is why he's called the Red Baron because he's the Baron, he's the, the he's the ruler of the skies basically, and he's riding a red plane. That's why he's the but Red you, Baron. You would see a similar style of, of plane still, you know, but only on like private. Yeah, the crop dusters, or yeah, yeah, crop dusters. <laughs> because oh, so, because because uh, it's cheap, right? And it doesn't need right. it doesn't fly so high that you need a very very elaborate airport to 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 take off. You just need your field. Usually, yeah, yeah um, usually people who own a field enough to have a plane to crop dust in will have a field. Quite noisy too, like you can literally hear them. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean. Every time I hear that noise, the old airplane noise, that I always think, uh, always uh, a, mu a certain music starts to play on my head. Like whenever you hear that, it's the it, it sounds familiar, but it's not Star Wars, but it is. No, it's like, I mean, it's very... Oh, it's like a, like a war background movie? Oh, yeah, it's like movie. a... It, that's the iconic Red Baron scene, is when, when you hear this plane, you have that music. I guess that's also playing in all the all his enemies' heads, because, oh no, it's the Red Baron. <laughs> because he is a distinguished uh, fighter pilot, um, and he's actually well-respected even by his enemies that when he finally got shot, he was given uh, full respect uh, military burial by his enemies, by the French. Mm -hmm. uh, Germany was against France during that time. And when he got shot, he still managed to land the plane before wow. succumbing. Because I guess the plane wasn't badly damaged, but as you could see in this picture, you, you yourself could get shot flying that plane because there's no shield or you know protection from you you're so you're if you think about it he's significantly smaller than a plane and he's and he's still not, yeah so. he's still the one <laughs> well kudos um, to the french for respecting uh you know giving respect, uh, paying respect. yeah a, a lot of people not just the french respected him even though he was the enemy because of his skill everyone was mm -hmm. uh kind of impressed basically 
All right, our notable figure born on day, born on this day, is Queen Elizabeth II. Well, obviously, when she was born, she was not Queen Elizabeth. It's Elizabeth II. In 1926, born as Princess Elizabeth of York in Mayfair, Mayfair, London, England, and married Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, she was coronated in the 2nd of June, 1953. Uh, and what's another fact about her? Oh, the house that she belonged to because royal people, royal, royal people usually belongs to certain houses. And she belongs to House Windsor. So her full name is Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor. Oh, Windsor. Yeah. So, yeah, she's still around. Um, if you've been paying attention to uh, entertainment and gossip tabloids and news, um, you would uh, she you would have read about her because uh, of the whole Prince uh, Harry. Was it Harry, the one that's? I'm so sorry, I don't follow. Actually, yeah, it, it's the prince that was married to like Meghan or something like that. Oh, but, like Meghan Markle. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. but yeah, he he denounced uh, the royal family. He didn't want to be. Well, he didn't want to be part of. Want to be ordinary, quote unquote. Ordinary. Yeah, no. uh, he didn't want to be. He, he didn't want to be part of what I don't like about royal people is the fact that they're still people. Why are they being held on a higher level than all the other people? He didn't want to be that. He didn't want to get the money, the riches, or anything. He wanted to work for himself, started a normal family. Because I mean, even though I don't like the rich royal people. They have their own share of problems, and while we do wish that we could be in a palace, the royal people, that's ordinary to them. And for him, his wish is what we have, the normal life, you know? Oh, oh, that, yeah. That's the thing about humans. We always want uh, what, we don't have. what we don't have. Yeah. If you go to the Philippines, there's a lot of products about how, making your skin as white or pale as possible. Because obviously, in in a poor country, the um, the paler the skin is, when we were under Spanish rule, the that's a symbol of you being richer. Well, because obviously you're not a farmer, you don't work on the fields, and your skin don't turn brown from the sun, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's where it comes from. It's not being racist or anything. That's just where that kind of belief comes from. So if you go to the Philippines, there's a, a lot of cosmetics that are aimed for whiter skin and stuff mm -hmm. like that and guess what happens here people want tans <laughs> something oh, yeah, that I we know. naturally yeah, have like, yeah like, <laughs> we've been trying to uh, have a complexion as yours and you wanted to have a complexion like what like you, you want you want our skin that sunburns so easily <laughs> wait what like <laughs> so so that, that's just natural it's just People always want something that we don't have because we constantly want to experience new things, whether we like it or not. A lot of people like being com comfortable, but deep down inside, if if uh, if it doesn't cause that much hassle, uh, we want to try something new. Like for me, I want to travel, taste all the foods in the world, but obviously, it's a hassle because I need money to do that and all the other stuff. We always are seeking. Even though I'm comfortable right now in my house, we always are seeking something new. And, you know, same with the situation with Prince, I hope his name is Harry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, yeah, going back to, to that and how, uh, you know, how, how, I guess, royalty are chosen. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not hating or anything, but I've been wondering, uh, how did the Great Britain got its name Great Britain? And, I mean, who, who called it Great in the first place? I mean, you know. As, I mean, they're the Even, ones who call themselves great yeah. it's, it's a little presumptuous. I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Much. Actually, the way you say you're a little presumptuous uh, is actually how um, British people say it nowadays uh, whenever they make fun of themselves. Because you know how people, they make fun of themselves. One of the things they say is like, how presumptuous are we to be calling ourselves great? Like, you know, I mean, I've been wondering about that. I mean, it's like, like I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm best Ian. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It, it sounds weird, right? You don't, you don't, you don't name yourself great. You just, the title will the follow other it. Other people determine yeah. you. Yeah, you the know, other that's... people will will call you what it is, but because obviously the name of the 
country was the Great Britain. <laughs> Why couldn't they just say Britain? <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> but oh, yeah, that's man. one of the things that uh, I hear British people make fun of themselves about. It's like, <laughs> why, why do we even do this? Like, it sounds weird. All right, our dish today is Morocco, and our dish is couscous. It's that yellow. Um, what did I used to describe it earlier? <laughs> crumbs. <laughs> crumbs. There you go. It looks like crumbs, because even though it is. Like, I would compare it to rice because it's a staple food of North but African grain, countries. Meat. Yeah, but instead, it, it's not as big as rice when it comes to the, the granules. So it's more like crumbs is what I would describe. It. Um, so this this is uh, in a tagine, which is this, the dish. The dish as in the container. Um, any dish that is cooked in it is called a tagine because it's cooked in a tagine, which is T-A-J-I-N-E. Uh, just out of curiosity, the the other object behind this plate is the cover. The cover. Because That's when you cook cover. it, you when you cook it, you actually you, you know how you cook the food in a pot and then you transfer it to a plate, right? Mm -hmm. This one, the plate itself is where you cook it. Okay. And then you put that cover on top, and it kind of steams it. Well, I mean, like, it's it's a fancy, I mean, not a fancy cover, but it's an unusual shape for a cover. Because, you know, usually covers are kind of dome-like. Yeah. Uh, for this one, um, it, you know how it's like, it's, it's a dome because it wants to trap something in, right? Yeah, yeah. But this mm -hmm. one is, is the reverse of a dome because a dome goes this way. This one goes it, yeah, that way. Yeah, it goes the opposite way, the other way, yeah. Which means it's not trying to trap the steam. It's steaming it in a way where the steam still escapes easily, mm -hmm. um, and it's and it's re replaced with new steam. So it's like a different type of steaming where it is steaming, but but it only traps the steam in there for a short amount of time before it comes out the top. And you can see from the top the the spout is a little bit big. If you mm -hmm. if you're trying to trap steam, that's not going to do the job because the spout is pretty big, and right. that's because they're actually encouraging the steam to get out after a few circulations inside, I guess. Okay. And it creates a, a you know a unique type of cooking. Uh, so I tried this because there's no restaurants, uh, Moroccan restaurants around, and I tried this thing which is. A Moroccan salmon on top of couscous, uh, and you know the the Mor it's Moroccan because of the spice, and from what I could tell, it tastes earthy. Spinach. Yeah, I got spinach, oh, which racist. is flavored flavored by the spice itself. Because even though the salmon is the only thing that's spice and the couscous, it's laying in there. So if you heat it up, then it's gonna take in the flavor. All right. Well, here's another question: Why the raisins? Come on. So the raisins is actually fitting because of the spice, and the spice is so what from my from what I could taste from the spice is that it has cayenne and paprika because it's spicy. Uh, it has cumin, so it's earthy. I mean, they cook it in an earthen pot, so they have to <laughs> keep they have to keep the theme there. And then to mellow out the spice, there is cinnamon and brown sugar in the spice. So it already is slightly sweet. It already has a note of sweetness into it that if you bite into that raisin, it's not that big a deal. It feels like it's part of it. Okay. As opposed to the usual culprits of ours, which is empanada and the Philippine menudo, the ground. You know what? I hate that. Like when I take a bite of it, then I will be, you know, I will, I will be biting that part. It kind of. Uh, it it kind of throws me off. Yeah, it's like you know pickles. I mean? <laughs> that's, that's the reason why I don't like pickles in hamburgers because it it throws me off. Like you bite into a pickle, it's like that flavor is so strong and it's different. Same with raisins during, in those dishes. You bite it, everything is savory and salty and then sweet, like <laughs> ultra sweet. Um, it's like, there you are, having a nice day, taking yeah. a bite of a good meal, and suddenly, <laughs> but here's the thing, I don't mind pickles when it's in relish form. Because it's not one big thing that you bite and they just slap you in the face with the pickle <laughs> flavor. It's spread all over. For example, the In-N-Out burger, 
the Thousand Island, the, the spread that they put has some pickles in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But I never complain about it because it's spread all over. When you bite into the burger, it feels... You get it right away. Uh -huh. Yeah, it feels part of the burger. Same with this one. Because the, the Moroccan spices already has sweet in it, the raisins feel like they belong there. It's not, uh, hey, JR, I am raisin slap. Like, <laughs> what was that? Oh, man, whoa. <laughs> I thought I was eating savory and sweet here. Like, what happened? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the, 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 the raisin looks out of place because we are kind of trained or kind of in our heads that looks out of place because of our experience with raisins. But in here, it actually works well. Our animal of the day is the bonobo, uh, who looks like a chimpanzee, but is not a chimpanzee. It shares almost 99% of their DNA with chimpanzees and with us humans. Ooh. The only difference is, obviously, a bonobo is different from us uh, chimpanzees as well. But if you're comparing between bonobo and chimpanzee, the bonobo is a smaller and darker. They have a darker hair mm -hmm. uh, and skin than chimpanzees. Uh, uh, and imagine that they're they're so different because of just one percent of the DNA. Um, I know. I, was, I mean, like if you look at it physically, you would. I mean, I would, I, you said also with humans, right? Yeah. So um, if, if they have them with humans, and you said there's only one percent uh, difference in DNA, but yeah. the difference is very visible. And that's because that one percent is everything outside, and everything inside is probably the same thing, probably the same. Mm -hmm skeleton shape except minor differences obviously there's their back is a little bit more curved um but it's the same makeup of bones same makeup of internal organs stuff like that so the one percent is just mostly outside uh, but anyways uh bonobos um are so similar with chimpanzees that they were not recognized as a spe separate species till 1929 mm -hmm. And they can be found in the forest south of Congo River. Uh, and since the surrounding area in the country, uh, Congo, has a lot of civil unrest and poverty, the bonobos are being hunted and sold by poachers for money. And the forests are being taken down for money. And of course, that destroys their habitat and they become endangered. They're not critically endangered, that's the only plus side of this, but they are still indeed endangered. Moving on to plant of the day, we have durum. And durum is a kind of wheat, as you can see in the picture, except they're more spiky looking than regular mm -hmm. wheat. It's the second most cultivated species of wheat. Uh, the first, obviously, is the common wheat, which being used to make flour which we use all the time you bread chicken with it you make cake with it you know you make so this is something you find in the couscous the, yes the, the crumbs they got the couscous is actually made of durum wheat and mm -hmm. uh, you know what else is made of durum wheat it's pasta so that is why it's the second most cultivated species uh a lot of uh a lot of cultures use pasta italians have spread that um that type of culinary uh, tradition knowledge. or knowledge to a lot of places and um, it's called durum because durum is the latin for hard and they are the most resistant when you mill them uh when you mill you, you mill you mill wheat to consume it you don't just bite into that spiky thing right there um i mean good luck <laughs> yeah so yeah it's featured today because uh it's part of couscous um, and it's also part of semolina flour, which is found at the bottom of certain pizza crusts, which is like the Domino's crust. You, you see that powdery kind of, it feels like it's sand, but it's not yeah, because yeah. you're eating it. I always thought it was part of the crust, but yeah. I no, it's sprinkled so that the crust would slide around. Oh, it won't that's stick. What, it, what it's for. Yeah, it that that's the main use of it, but it's delicious still. <laughs> so it has a I functional mean, you know, uh, two in one stone. Yeah, functional purpose and also you know tastes good too. So why not? It's just amazing how how we as humans discover things. You know, uh, if not most of the time, a lot of times by accident, and it's a oh well, it's good. Usually <laughs> the case, right? <laughs> 
For our day, we are done with Noel Bradley, so we are going to do something, uh, somewhat, uh, go with someone different. Mm -hmm. uh, and since it's April, we're going to start with something funny, and it is Animate Wall by this man here, Mr. Dan Frazier. And I started. I already saw that a while ago. Yes. Now I saw it again, and now I'm uh, glad to see this grumpy wall. Again. <laughs> the grumpy wall. Let's let's zoom into the grumpy wall right there. Uh, but yeah, you you said earlier that you think that you thought that she's the one that casts the magic to animate hey, the wall. It looks like she's to, like you know magic like, uh, like wall turn become alive or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and my interpretation is that hey. the wall is alive and she's like, ah! She's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so no matter how you interpret it, it's pretty funny. Um, so yeah, I started with this because it's actually my favorite art, as I mentioned earlier. Well, I mentioned earlier off screen. You guys haven't said, heard me said it yet. <laughs> um, and this is during the time when the art in the game that I played, Magic the Gathering, were very varied and, you know, they don't look samey. Nowadays, they look the same because there's art direction. And what I mean by that... Oh, wow. Yeah, what I mean by that is like they want the game, they want the cards to look like they, they belong together. So the art is usually very similar to each other now. Uh, well, I haven't played the Magic the Gathering card uh, for a long time, but when I used to play, which was more than a decade ago... Too, too bad we never have time to play, because if you still learn, know how to play, I, built, uh, mm -hmm. I built something called a battle box where you don't have to buy any of the cards, because that's the problem with playing this game. It's very expensive. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, because uh, do, do they still release, uh, I, I don't know, conditions? Is that what you call it? Yeah, like... Boots or boxes or like sets well, or no, something no, like that. Like back in the day when I was playing, you know how they have, uh, uh, what do you call this, like an edition Ravnica or Ravnica. Yeah, yeah, that's that's called a set. So oh, they the still set. do and that. And they got the Kamigawa, which by the way, had for Japan. me, had the, one of the best artworks, you know. Yeah, it's like very Japan themed. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I mean, is that back now, nowadays, they kind of tell the artist to paint a certain picture. And there's only like a few exceptions now. There are some artists who actually have a very unique art style that, you know, even though it's the new age of magic cards, so you can still tell it's them. It's very different. But back then, it's free for all. Like, they literally told this guy, Dan Frazier, hey, we need the art for uh, a card that will make a wall be able to attack because normally a wall <laughs> won't attack you. So how so will wall attack? Than putting a face in a yeah, well, you have, you put a grumpy face because <laughs> if it's smiling, it's not attacking. It's being yeah. friendly. So it has to be a grumpy face. And then how will it attack if it doesn't have limbs and feet? That's true. <laughs> yeah, so he drew feet and <laughs> limbs at the side of the wall. So there you go. You got animated wall. So this, this literally looks like it got forced. I and mean, it doesn't like it being forced to be animated. <laughs> And another thing, I think this wall will fit on the Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just just like the Beauty and the Beast items, right? Like the teacups, the... Yeah. the <laughs> maybe that's his inspiration. Um, but anyways, uh, this is funny, but... I'm, I mean, Dan Frazier is an expert, and you will see on the next coming weeks his more iconic stuff. This okay. one is not iconic. Uh, this one is just my personal favorite because of how funny it is. In <laughs> fact, I made a deck full of walls just to use this card. Uh, because uh, there's a game now in Magic where it's called Commander. Where uh -huh. you know how you build a deck, right? Mm -hmm. And in Commander, you have a separate card that is legendary. So he's like some sort of hero. So he has a name. It's not just guard or soldier it's actually like has a name like for example jr the teacher is a legendary because you're it's like someone well known mm -hmm. so i have this deck for commander where you pick one legendary guy and then you you what you could do is base the whole deck uh, around that one card because that one card is always available to you when you draw your your hand if you build a deck you have to Hope that you get the card, right? They yeah. hope to get the card. Because you only have a max of four of the same card. But exactly. But legendary, only one. Yeah. But in this game, it's always beside you. And you could 
summon it from beside you oh. into the field. And if it dies, you could send him back to that uh, spot beside you. And the next time, you could summon him again, but you pay two extra. So he just becomes more expensive, but you always have access to him. Okay. So that means you could build a deck around him. And then there's this dragon that they released, I think, a year ago or two years ago. And his ability is to make um, walls be able to attack and deal damage using their life instead of Ooh. their attack. So I built a bunch of a deck with just a bunch of walls, and it's hilarious because I'm like attacking with like wall of vines or like wall of fog. Like how do you attack? With that? <laughs> wall of air, wall of fire. Yeah, well, this fire is like. I mean, you know. And then I did that just to put this card in it, even though it's not a very good card because I don't need to play this card. My my commander already does it, right? It already yeah. animates the wall. But I still wanted to put this card in there. Just so when I play someone and I play it, they go, What is that? Does that wall have a face? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the whole point of the deck is to just make people look confused when they see the card. <laughs> because most of the play players who play nowadays, they don't know of this card. Because this is back when it, it came out when I was like 13, 14. Right. It, it does look like it's a very... Uh... Oh, David. Yeah. Network. So, like, players nowadays who started just years ago would be like, I didn't know there's a card that looks like that. I mean, back then, that that's that's my favorite thing about playing now is when I play these old cards that no one has uh, <laughs> seen before. Uh, during the time when art in Magic was so random, like, there would be like, uh, I think I have it here still. I hope this is it. Oh no, this is not it. Uh oh. I don't know where it is, but... I have... Uh, there is an art of a card called Presence of the Master. Mm -hmm. And it has a drawing of Einstein in it. They would not allow that nowadays because, you know, it's like we're, we're a separate world. Why do we have Einstein? Right, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> But I guess they told the artist, is like, I guess the card is called Presence of the Master, so up to you what you want to draw. And the artist is like, who's the master? Mm -hmm. I guess Einstein is the master. <laughs> <laughs> and he just drew a picture of Einstein. Like, what is this? <laughs> so I like showing those cards to new players nowadays by playing it, not just going, hey, look at this. I want to just, <laughs> yeah, yeah totally that, that's boring. I want to just like play it and they'd be like, what's going on? <laughs> Especially um, in the heat of battle where yeah. everyone's like thinking seriously, you know? Yeah, they're thinking seriously and then all of a sudden, oh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Our word of the day, since today is Big Word Day, that's one of the observance that I didn't uh, include in the observances because I want to include it here. Uh, we're going to show, show a big word that has eight letters in Scrabble. Because when you use seven of your letters, you get something called a bingo, you get 50 bonus points. And I chose eight because normally you attach the, the, the word into someone else's letter. Mm -hmm. So eight is the perfect number. That's the most likely. But this word is so weird because you, if you play it just the right way, it earns you a lot of points. And that word is Quincy. Q, U, I, N, Z, H, E, E. You know, I wish we, we called Z, Z, just like the British did. Because it makes Are it... Are they still doing it? Yeah, because it makes it sound different than C, like the letter C, A, B, C. That's true. Because <laughs> when you, you say... Know, but, but in our country, I think uh, the not so right way to say is Zay. <laughs> Zay. For some reason. Letter Z. I mean, I'm, all, I'm, also on, I'm also for that because it's different from C. That's why I don't like about the alphabet. Uh, remember when we did, uh, what do you call this? Multiple choice? I would usually do A, B, oh, yeah, C, last, yeah, B, e, B, or no, A, B, C, F. Yeah. Because D and E sounds like C and B. Ah, <laughs> like, uh, man. So I, I wish it was that. But anyways, it's a type of shelter originally used by North American Indians consisting of a mound of snow with a dome chamber dug into it. So it sounds like an igloo, but igloo is made out of blocks of ice. This one is just, you form it. And here's a picture of it. So they just formed the mound. 
Um, and well, how you do that is you kind of like the heat of your hand will melt the ice a little bit. But because it's in a cold region, after you melt the ice a little bit, it freezes again. Yeah, okay. So it becomes glue, basically. That's how they could form a mound. Is while, while you're patting it down, you're heating it up and melting it a little bit, and then the cold air like refreezes it. So now you have a mound that is actually sturdy enough to be a shelter. Uh, so, why is this so special? Well, number one, Q and Z are each 10 points. Uh, letter H is four points, and then the rest of them, U, I, N, and the two E's are one point each. So that's a total of, so Q and Z is 20, uh, H is four, so 24, and then there's five, so 29. However, when you play this, you could play it in a way, because it's eight letters, that hits two triple word scores because the triple word scores are eight apart from each other now here's a cool thing about it if you play it that way the z or the z lands exactly at a double letter score as well so you double the z so it's actually 20 instead of 10 and you have a total of 39 now you landed on a triple word score, so 39 times 3 is 117. And then 117 times 3 again, because there's another triple word score, is 351. Wow. And since you use all seven letters, you get a bingo point of 50. <laughs> so you get 401 points by playing this word at the right spot. And that's the highest you can get. Um, that uses eight letters there's more like that i i know there's one that um that uses 15 letters but that's almost impossible to do because you can only have seven letters at a time uh but yeah uh not a very useful tip you'd likely not use this in your scrabble well uh, if playing. you happen to you if know, you happen to this. yeah you would immediately win because everyone else will quit Consider yourself a master. Now, yeah, now, now, uh, we were talking about this earlier. We were trying to find a word that you could shout when you use all seven letters because you get 50 points. You got to be excited about it, right? Uh, I mean, in any other game, you get excited about it. Uh, Uno, when you're mm -hmm. down with just one card, you shout Uno. Uh, well, do you shout Jenga when the thing doubles <laughs> over? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like you're saying you're making fun of the guy. Ha <laughs> ha, Jenga. <laughs> uh, you Yahtzee shout bingo. Oh, Yahtzee. You shout bingo when you win. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there's a word for this already of using seven tiles. It's bingo. And I don't like that because bingo is in a separate game. Already. Already taken. Yeah. So your assignment is to find out what word you could shout if you use seven letters, all seven letters. Because uh, I want to use it in Joe. I'm pretty sure I could use it against Joe. And Emily too. Okay, but yeah, so far nobody uh, has used it yet. And, Emil mean, and, me, and, and Emily too. Emily's not very good at Scrabble either, but at least she's slightly better at Joe from what I saw. <laughs> uh, I th and I think it's sim it's not that Joe is not good. Joe is just too brave at challenging people. Like if, he, if you do a word that like the ah ah from last week, if you do something like that, he will challenge you and it will cause him to lose turns and that's why he's like, he loses a lot of points and that's the, that's the main thing. I mean, I know like one of our students already beat him, uh, I've heard so. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyways, moving on to our food fact of the day, real quick. Since we were already wasted a lot of time from messing up, or I wasted our time. I'm not gonna pass on the buck, uh, it's my fault. Our food fact is that apple pie was not invented in the United States. Because uh, uh, although pie became iconic with America, with the quote, as American as, I should say it like a cowboy, as American as apple pie. <laughs> or burgers. Or <laughs> yeah, but mainly apple pie. <laughs> it was not actually invented here because pies itself was invented in medieval England long ago, before the Europeans even came here. 
and the modern day re recipe of apple pie complete with the whole basket weave cross hatch thing at the top mm -hmm. um, was created by the Dutch. Not us. Oh. We just popularized. And but that's but that's true with anything. I mean, no, but here, here's the irony though. You know how a lot of um, um, other countries food that were invented here, for example, fortune cookie is one. Oh um, yeah. It was heavily connected to uh, like Asian food, right? Yeah, they, they think uh, fortune cookies are Chinese. Yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. think uh, orange chicken and beef broccoli is Chinese. Orange chicken, yeah, yeah. right? So, but it wasn't good in here. Yeah, but the ones that there's uh, plenty. There's like yeah, but, but the ones that this country is claiming for the apple pie was not invented here. No, yeah, it's weird. It's always somewhere else. I mean, uh, what else is like from uh, that? That's from here, but it's we think it's uh, from somewhere else. Corned beef and cabbage. Okay, there you yeah, go. There you go. Right? So there, there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, and not even just the United States. Like, um, Hawaiian pizza is not from the United States because Hawaii. It's not like Italian, too. It's not Italian. It's Canadian. <laughs> of all the. It's, it's not Italian, even though it has the word pizza. It ha it's not United States, even though it has Hawaii in it. It's Canada. <laughs> so it's just all about who makes it popular. But here's the thing, uh, at the end of the day, we're all winners, you know, having a... Uh, I mean, yeah, no one no one says that, oh, because you're uh, American, you can't have apple pie because the Dutch invented it. Nope, uh, we all share our discoveries with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, the things and like traditions are passed down and everyone has access to it if they want it to. Uh, that, that's uh, why, you know... The key, I, po I the, the key point, though, is if you want it to, because I don't want no Hawaiian <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, well, yeah, that's true. That's, I, well, I don't like. I mean, for some of you, I, mean, I, I I grew fond of pineapple and pizza. Uh, at first, again, you know, I, I guess I was like you at first that I couldn't. It, it's basically the first time uh, Hawaiian pizza was introduced to me was kind of like the uh, raisins in the yeah uh, <laughs> the, the, the empanada. So I was like, oh. but I guess uh, I got used to it. So I guess there's still hope for me to <laughs> like. Raisins yeah, I, I mean that's the that's the thing, right? Because if 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 there are people who put raisins in empanada, despite the the fact that we don't like it, the fact that people put it there means someone likes it. It's, the, it's not only us that eats empanadas. There's some other people. So that's the same for uh, pineapple and pizza. Just not for me, but you can have it if you want. <laughs> oh man. Anyways, that is our show again today. Uh, you don't. You didn't see the first time around. Making oh, sure no, that. Make sure it's that, that, that I'm, I'm making, this time. Oh man, I, 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 I was making sure. There's a red circle that says record this time. <laughs> for, for anyone who saw us on on Ian's Twitch channel. Somehow, if you somehow saw. Because <laughs> <you somehow. laughs> uh, I don't use that channel often. I use it to play like retro games, but it, I never have time to play that much lately. And nowadays, because we're so busy, um, if I have time to play a game, so like right now I said I was playing Saga Frontier Remastered, mm -hmm. I don't have the time to talk. Because uh, if you're doing a stream, you have to talk and engage with the audience. But although the audience is usually just like my circle of friends, I, I, I don't have the energy to do that. Like mm -hmm. if after work, like after we record this, I'm probably going to play Saga Frontier Remastered and I'd, I'd shut up. I'm just... I've yeah, enough... I don't think I can be a streamer either. Yeah, I've done enough I talking. Play, I focus and when I focus, well, not just a focus. Well. We we talk a lot already in our jobs that we don't want to talk even more. Unless uh, if we are going to be playing, you know, friends. Like if we play together. Together, uh, we, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but I mean anyway. that's the thing, right? Uh, remember our staff Maria. She has a husband who is a chef. Mm -hmm. She says like because she, he's a good cook. But he never ever makes dinner anymore because after all the cooking that you do at work, yeah, when you get like, home, you're just done. Like, no more. <laughs> Same with me. Like, my dad would usually talk to me. It's like, hey, what are you cooking? I don't even answer him <laughs> <laughs> because I just don't want to talk. After talking so much right now, uh, recording, it's uh, it's rest time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, it definitely could be time. Right yeah. Or if I even talk, uh, I say like, one two words like what are you doing taking out trash that's it 
<laughs> All right. Uh, speaking of stop talking, then now is the time for us to stop talking. Stop Thank talk. you guys <laughs> for watching. Yeah, we did two rounds of this today. Uh, see you guys next time.